I have like a lot of people that ask like, okay, but what are we like working towards? Like what, which one are we trying to be? And it's like, no, everybody has their own unique path, their own way that they feel most safe and most understood. So there's no one way to do it, but whatever your fight language is, there is a more productive way to be showing up in conflict. You're listening to Make Some Noise Podcast, episode number 539 with guest Lena Morgan. Welcome to Make Some Noise Podcast, your guide for strategies, tools, and insight to empower yourself. I'm your host, Andrea Owen, global speaker, entrepreneur, life coach since 2007, and author of three books that have been translated into 18 languages and are available in 22 countries. Each week, I'll bring you a guest or a lesson that will help you maximize unshakable confidence, master resilience, and make some noise in your life. You ready? Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. I am so glad that you are here. I wanted to make sure that you try to tune in for the mini-sode that's coming out in just a few days. I have a very big announcement happening, um, something that's going on in my personal life, and it is finally going to be something that I can reveal at least part of it uh, in the next mini-sode. But before that, and sorry, sorry for like the vague, you know, <laughs> I hate those, <laughs> but I know it's something that's going to be mentioned from here on out. So I don't want anyone to be like, wait, what I miss? So yeah, that'll come out in just a couple of days, episode 540. All right. But before any of that, uh, this particular guest I stumbled upon on TikTok, as I have been finding many of my guests in the past couple of years, and this work was just so unique. It was something I had never heard of before, and I was so intrigued. It was so fascinating, and I knew I had to have her on the show to share her work with you guys. So uh, I'm just going to let the interview speak for itself, but let me tell you a little bit about our guest. Ooh, but before I do that, can I ask a favor? Please, 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 I beg of you, if you haven't already, please leave a review of my podcast wherever you listen to podcasts, Spotify, Apple, wherever. It matters so much. It matters more than I wish it did. <laughs> so as a thank you to me and the guests I bring you, I would be incredibly grateful if you would leave a review. Okay. Let's get on with it. After spending over a decade as a midwife, walking people through incredible transformation, Lena Morgan has expanded that powerful wisdom to all of life. Her passion remains to reunite people with their most powerful selves, healing old stories along the way. Expanding into the way we fight, Lena has created a new path to better understanding ourselves and our partners. Her goal, as always, is to help you heal the stories and change your world. So without further ado, here is Lena. <laughs> Lena, thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so excited. I'm excited too. You came across, like like many of my guests over the last couple of years, you came across my FYP on TikTok. <laughs> and <laughs> I like you, to think TikTok. the universe is like, <laughs> Here, this person is smart and your audience would love to hear about their work. And so again, thanks for being on. I, I want to start kind of from the beginning in terms of how I understand your career has gone. And so you started out as a midwife and then from Correct. there created something called the Storyteller Collection. So can you tell us about that and why you created it? Yeah, absolutely. So I was a midwife for over a decade, had three busy birth centers. It was oh, wow. an enormous practice. Yeah, yeah, it was the biggest in Alaska for sure. Like most women in these kind of caretaking jobs where it's passion fueled, it's so easy to get burnt out, which is exactly what I did. So a few years ago, just in a way to deal with the burnout, I had to stop as a midwife and figure out like, okay, but what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Because um, I love everything about midwifery. I love working with women and empowering them and reminding them exactly how powerful they are. So the Story Healer Collection was a way to do that without having to actually be in birth rooms with women. And 
then I could open it up where it wasn't just during pregnancy and childbirth that I could walk with someone. I, it was any phase of life. It was all the rites and passages that we go through. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was the, um, in the figuring out, like when we have to set one version of ourselves down yeah. And how do we create the next? I'm sure you're familiar with that. Those times when we're like, oh, great. What now? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's definitely, I mean, everyone, I think that's part of the human experience. And for women, it can be, I mean, I'm about to turn 48 next week as we're recording this. And I'm definitely Happy feeling, birthday. thank you. I'm definitely feeling, and I've been feeling like the kind of middle age phase for a while. And now my periods are regular. So I'm kind of going into that phase and my children are teenagers. And it's just, there's several mm-hmm. different instances of, of our life. And, you know, I'm, I grew out my gray hair and so I'm headed towards the crone phase as they call it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I love it. It's, Which it's, has been like such a joy for me is walking with women through all these different phases mm-hmm. because it's the same, you know, as when we were becoming mothers. Now that we're looking at more of the wiser years where we have information to impart, like how, what are we leaving behind there mm-hmm. that we don't want to take forward with us? How are we embodying this new version of ourselves? So that's what the story healing work has been about. Like, how do you heal the stories mm-hmm. that kept you in that version of yourself? Yeah. Or maybe they're generational and heal the version of you to yes. embody the new. Mm-hmm. Oh, generational. That could be a whole nother podcast episode in and of itself. So talk to us about, I want to sort of, sort of shift gears because one of the things you talk about, especially on social media, and I think you have workshops and classes around this, talk to us about the five different fight languages and feel free, like let's spend some time here because I want people to really kind of um, dig in and understand these because I find this fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. So a big part of uh, what I was figuring out after sitting with people in crises, in really stressful parts of life, in the kind of knee jerk ways that we show up when we're in conflict, when we're in high levels of stress was to like, it started coming together of like, oh, there's really types here. Mm -hmm. And so starting to articulate like, okay, here's the six different types that I see when people are in conflict. Um, So yeah, there's six different fight languages. Do you want me to just start at the top? Yeah, let's start at the top. Mm -hmm, However you want to present it. Yeah. The aggressor is first. We call them the general. And these are people that come in hard and fast to a fight. Okay. So what's motivating them a lot of the time is conflict feels so unsafe that they're going to go big to shut everyone else down. Okay. So yeah, we think of them as maybe someone that like almost enjoys the fight or, you know, they can go so mean and it's like, Oh no, these are people that actually dislike the fight so much. They're going to say things they don't mean. They're going to be over the top. They're going to use whatever is available to them to suppress the fight, even Mm -hmm. if it means they're making themselves the bad guy and they're harming people around them. Okay. What's that one called again? That's the aggressor or the general. The second one is evasive or the magician. So your evasive fighter is someone that is like, you almost see them ducking and dodging any sort of blame in the conflict. And they might do this in a lot of different ways. Like they might use sarcasm. Mm -hmm. They might minimize your experience. They might go philosophical and get on a soapbox and head off in a totally, I mean, it's like vaguely related, but Mm -hmm. barely, you know, tangent. Mm -hmm. Um, So these are people that these, all of these fight languages are connected to what we experienced in early childhood. So these are people that understood that being blamed for a situation carried such high consequences that they needed to make sure they completely were blame free whenever possible. Okay. Just duck out. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Shifted onto somebody else. Or, um, you know, there's a classic line, well, I guess I'm the asshole. Then, Mm -hmm, you know, it mm -hmm. puts the other person on the defense of, no, that's not what I'm saying. You know, it's a really great way to evade whatever the conflict is, whatever the tension is in that moment. Okay. So next we have the fixers and I call them the mechanics. Mm -hmm. So these typically are codependent people, pleasers fall into this category. Um, So our fixers are people that are, really uncomfortable with conflict, but they dive right into the middle of it and decide, okay, 
I can make this okay. I can make this better for everyone. Um, so there are people that might be excessive apologizers or might try to explain your feelings to you like, mm. no, I don't think it's like that. I think it's more like this. And if it's like this, then you don't need to feel bad about it. Are or these people that also like will tell you what they think you want to hear? Oh, totally. Totally. Okay. They just want to make the conflict go away, make mm -hmm. the tension go away. And it doesn't matter if things are really dealt with as long as it feels okay. And then after that, we have our righteous or the attorney. So these are people that when they're in conflict, fairness and facts are like their number one priority. So these are people that really want to, if you tell them they've done something wrong, they want you to prove it. Okay. They want you to cite your sources. They want you to have really fact-based evidence. Um, so these are people that really struggle with when someone says, I feel like this. They're like, well, but that doesn't make sense. You shouldn't mm -hmm. feel like that because yeah. here's the facts. You know, these are people that when they were young, it's like they might have saw people being blamed or they themselves were blamed in ways that felt really unfair or mm -hmm. unjust. And so now they're walking through life to make sure that things stay just, the okay. scales are balanced. Mm -hmm. Then we go down to our victim or the thespian. Okay. And <laughs> These are people that um, I say their superpower is emotions because they have access to all of them and mm -hmm. they can get incredibly big. Uh, so our thespians are people who have no problem understanding the feelings that are inside of them and expressing them. And the thing they really are looking for in conflict is to have their feelings be validated or understood. Mm -hmm. So until that point happens, they're going to notice their feelings getting bigger and bigger. And they might say things like, you don't understand me. You just don't care about me. You know, things that really have nothing to do with the argument and a lot to do with their emotional state inside. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these were people that maybe when they were really young, the home they grew up in wasn't safe to feel emotions in, mm -hmm. or they felt like they had to justify the emotions they had. Well, then. I need to have a really big emotional response to justify someone engaging with me. Yeah. Or maybe they had to have a, a big emotional response, response for anyone to even pay attention to them in the first place. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. So they registered that experience. information. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I mean, I am absolutely a thespian as one of my top two fight languages. And it's because I grew up in a house where nobody was okay with emotions. Yeah, same. Nobody around me did. So, mm -hmm. yeah. You could put on a, a kid, show. <laughs> yeah. To and I went the other direction. I suppressed all my emotions. So then mm -hmm. when I was out of that, I was like, well, never again that. I mm -hmm. want to have them be as much as I can. Yeah. Same experience. The final fight language is withdrawal or the astronaut. And so these are people that whenever tensions start rising, when conflict starts feeling unsafe, they head out. And it might be someone that kind of go retreats into their mind. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they really just don't engage anymore and they shut down. It might be someone that physically leaves, like they mm -hmm. get in their car and go away. Mm -hmm. Or it can be someone that like uses distraction as a way to leave. So they're like, they've got work they need to do. They've got a show they're into. They're going to play video games and tune you out. Um, so these are people that have experienced conflict in ways where it was so unsafe that it was going to cause harm to somebody. And the safest way to navigate that was literally to leave, Yeah, to not be engaged with it at all. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say like, do people like have a mix of these? Do you lean towards one? How does that work? Totally. So when you take the quiz on my website, it gives you your main one, yeah. but you could be 40% thespian, say, and also 40% fixer and 20% something else. Mm -hmm. So you can have a lot of different ways that you are speaking during a fight, basically. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's, um, it's always really profound when you take the quiz with like a different person in mind that you're fighting with, because you'll have different responses come That's up. That's what I was going to ask. Does it depend yeah. on the topic you're fighting about? And does it depend on the mm -hmm. person? Right. Because different people hit different 
um, triggers for us or different feelings of safety for us or different core wounds for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the the way you fight with your sibling is going to be really different than the way you fight with your coworker. Right. The way you fight with a parent could be really different than a friend and a partner might be totally different than all of them. So depending on the levels of safety, like it could be that someone's safe to actually be in the thespian or have that aggressor anger come out, whereas other people it's not safe. And so you mm-hmm. withdraw or you try to fix it. Okay, this is so interesting. We need to take a quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to ask you more questions about this. Shopify's already taken the cash register online, helping millions sell billions around the world. But did you know that Shopify can do the same thing at your retail store? Give your point of sale system a serious upgrade with Shopify. With Shopify, you get a powerhouse selling partner that effortlessly unites your in-person and online sales into one source of truth. Track every sale across your business in one place and know exactly what's in stock. Connect with customers inline and online. Shopify helps you drive store traffic with plug and play tools built for marketing campaigns from TikTok to Instagram and beyond. Get hardware that fits your business. Take payments by smartphone, transform your tablet into a point of sale system, or use Shopify's POS Go mobile device for a battle-tested solution. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash noise, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash noise to take your retail business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash noise. I have definitely been in that place where my paycheck ran out before the next one got here. Life doesn't happen bi-weekly, so why should payday? The money you earn can be in your hands today with Earnin. Earnin is an app that gives you access to your pay as you work, up to $100 per day or up to $750 per pay period. Just download the Earnin app and verify your paycheck, then access up to $100 a day as you work and leave an optional tip. Any money you access plus tips are automatically repaid from your next paycheck. You can use Earnin to pay for a girl's night out, a last minute gift for a loved one, or even summer camp for the kids. Make Earnin a part of your financial routine and join Earnin's over three and a half million customers who say things like, when I think about Earnin, I think about financial stability, security. It gives me a lot of peace of mind. Download Earnin today, spelled E-A-R- N-I-N in the Google Play or Apple App Store. When you download the Earnin app, type in noise under podcast when you sign up. It really, really helps the show. Noise under podcast. Subject to your available earnings, location, daily max, and pay period max. See earnin.com slash TOS for details. Earnin is a financial technology company, not a bank. Bank products are issued by Evolve Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Okay, I I definitely in the in the fight languages I see what I tend to do, you know, with with and it's interesting because I used to be in my first very long relationship I was the aggressor and then oh, when I now in, in this relationship I have a very different reaction from my partner, so I've changed uh-huh. my fight language based on but I want to be the aggressor. That's like my my instinct. But now uh-huh. I think also because I'm so much more emotionally mature um, yep. and understand this, I immediately know that that's my place coming from like the wounded child mm-hmm. and I won't do that. But um, I'm trying to think like how, what is, what is mine now? When you said the righteous the per one, you know, who's the attorney that wants you to prove it sometimes like when, so- and this is with like several people who, who say, they tell me, they give me feedback, like, Hey, it, it hurts me when I, when you do this. Mm-hmm. I don't see it from their perspective. And so I ask for examples and I don't, I won't say mm-hmm. like, prove it. You're wrong. Like I, I yeah. genuinely like, can you give me an example of when this happened? Cause I don't remember this at all. Like, I don't remember right. it. Like you do, like, I, I believe them because it's their mm-hmm. experience. I'm not saying that they're wrong. I'm not going to gaslight them, but I, the reason that I want to know is so that I can know when I do it in the future. So I can yeah. try to be better. So is that totally. different? So you perfectly highlighted the protective versus the productive ways that we show up in these fight languages. So when we ask for clarification maybe, or, hey, that doesn't really make sense to me. Can you give me some examples of it? You are showing up with the really productive part of the righteous fight language. Okay. But 
if you were to show up saying that's not true, I didn't say that I didn't mean that, you know, Uh no, I don't think that. Okay. Now we're in more of the protective where you're not looking to have connection and understanding with the other person. You've literally pulled that shield up in front of you Mm -hmm. and now you're fighting from behind it. Okay. Do you, in your work, do you talk, because I probably jumped ahead a little bit. Do you talk about the, what the differences might look like for each of those to be in the protector versus the productive? Exactly. So I have a quick guide that you can download on the website and it goes through the protective traits and the productive traits, because that's the thing with all the fight languages. None are better than the other. Okay. I have like a lot of people that ask like, okay, but what are we like working towards? Like Mm -hmm. what, which one are we trying to be? And it's like, no, everybody has their own unique path, their own way that they feel most safe and most understood. So there's no one way to do it, but whatever your fight language is, there is a more productive way to be showing up in conflict. So like you in your past relationship didn't have the safety there to be in a productive form, but now you do. Mm -hmm. And I'm so curious, like, what do you think is the main difference between the two relationships that make it safer to like, not show up with the knee jerk reaction. Well, I think in the past relationship that it was just energetically, you know, cause you're, I, I think that you don't show up, at least in my experience with different long-term relationships, I don't show up the same because it's just different energies. And sure. so in that previous relationship, a, we were young um, and neither of us had the maturity that we, that we needed to have a, a good relationship. And the energy was just intense in all aspects Mm. of the relationship, which made for some really fun things, um, if you know what I mean, but also bad for communication and when we would hurt each other. So I think the difference, a lot of it is totally different personality in a partner and my own Mm. like maturity and learning how to communicate and just honestly, I'll just say what it is like learning how to be kind during conflict because I like everyone else gets triggered Mm -hmm. and like immediately feels that wound just ripped open. Like, and mine Mm -hmm. is abandonment. Like, okay, this is it. The relationship's over. He's going to leave me. I'm going to be all all my, all by myself for the rest of my life. So that's immediately where I used to go. And it's Mm -hmm. taken, gosh, probably a decade of marriage to get to that place of security where when we do disagree or have, you know, arguments, it's still very uncomfortable, but that wound isn't activated. So it alleviates, um, and I'm a big fan of John Gottman's work and I'm sure you've Mm -hmm. read his work too. Um, just, and I also understand like what's happening physiologically just with flooding, you know, when your heart rate gets high, you don't think straight, you don't. (laughs) Yeah. So it's just things like that, just Mm -hmm. wiser, I guess, older and wiser. And maybe yeah. like 450 plus interviews with really smart people like you. <laughs> <laughs> Always super helpful. I love that though. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because exactly like you were saying there, when you get flooded, you know, like, yeah, we do revert back into what's familiar and known for mm-hmm. us. So I like to say it is like when you have any sort of fight or flight, you can't think creatively. No. All you can do is like head down that super highway in your brain. Um, and so knowing the fight languages and recognizing, because, you know, before I did this, it was like, I had no concept that I was showing up in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I just thought I was just me. This is just how I do it, you Mm -hmm. know? And so understanding like, oh man, here's what the fixer looks like. Here's what the thespian looks like, you know? Then being able to recognize when it's happening meant that suddenly it wasn't like, that's, I was just flooded with that. It let me take a step back and see. So exactly like you're saying there, you know, to have the emotional maturity to be like, oh, here you are doing the thing. Yeah. And you might choose to do the thing that you've always done. You know what the results are going to be. And maybe right now you just, all you can do is the familiar. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. But maybe next time with more recognition, I'll be able to step a little bit more in a different direction. Maybe, maybe, you know, hopefully, (laughs) yeah, (laughs) Yeah. hopefully, exactly. Well, and I, I want to kind of circle back to what you were saying, because that was one of my questions to ask you, like, is, is any one of them more detrimental than the others? Because I know when, when John Gottman talks Mm -hmm. about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, he does talk about how stonewalling and contempt can be like the two that are, are really bad if they go unchecked for a long time. But do you think all of these are pretty even in their, you know, just being, Mm -hmm thumbs down? (laughs) 
Um, I think that depending on your wounds and depending on the person you're fighting with, they all have the potential to cause incredible damage. Mm -hmm. So like in my partnership, because I come in with this big emotional thing and he has a relationship with his mother where there was a lot of emotional manipulation and abuse, my emotional reaction just missiles Mm -hmm. right to his most tender spots. Whereas somebody else wouldn't have that reaction to me, you know, they'd be like, wow, a little over the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know? Um, So yeah, all of them hold the potential to create deep wounds, which is why when we have the awareness around it, we can see what our partner's doing. We can understand because on the quick guide, it talks about like, here's how someone might be, um, kind of grenading the situation. Here's how they're pulling the ripcord to get out of here. And we can like have the understanding that they are totally overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. They are kicked back into old stuff. And here you can look at the map of how they're navigating this, which gives you more empathy and understanding for the other person. Suddenly it's not about you so much. You're like, oh man, I see you doing that thing. Okay, this is your really shitty way to tell me you're totally overwhelmed and you don't have the capacity for this anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that reminds me of of one of the things that I've learned over the years and as I've gotten older and more mature, especially in in not just romantic relationships, but in my my closer friendships too, is making sure that the person that you're in a disagreement with or a hard conversation, whatever you want to call it, feels safe to express themselves. Because mm. I think we've all the people listening and you two have been in that place where you're in a hard conversation, agreement, fight, whatever you want to call it, and you don't feel safe yeah. expressing and and also being demonstrative with your emotions because you know you're mm-hmm. either going to get made fun of or dismissed or gaslit. And it just yeah. that I think is just throws gasoline on the fire and it's just a surefire way for neither of you to hear each other and listen to what Mm -hmm. each other are saying, where it just becomes like jockeying for who can hurt each other the most in the shortest amount of time. That's what the fights in my former relationship used to look like. And that is ugly Uh and it's fighting dirty and I have done it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I, I, it's almost embarrassing to say, but like, I think he and I got really good at it and it just, and then over time, it gets worse because like you're, you kind of become immune to it. So it just, yeah. gets, oh, it's awful. And my heart goes out to anyone mm-hmm. who's in a relationship where that's the kind of communicating that's happening. Totally. No, you're right. Your threshold for it increases mm-hmm. and your everybody is getting more in that deep spiral together. And if we take it like a 10,000 foot view, look at that. You were both really uncomfortable and unsure of how to navigate the conflict. So you had this one good way to do it. Right. And then you just kept doubling down on that, you know? Yeah. Well, what do you say for like someone who's listening to this, who sees themselves as one of the ones that you mentioned and, and probably sees their partner in one of the ones, or even if somebody's like is, is, is single and sees themselves and, and, mm-hmm. you know, wants to get into a future relationship. How does someone address this with their partner who wants to do better? Totally. So hands down, the place to start is with yourself. Mm -hmm. So no matter, because you can have conflict in a million different relationships around you. If you change the way you're showing up, 50% of that conflict has changed. We can have a totally different outcome just from how you're showing up differently. So remember, this is a fight language. This is a language that is happening with yourself as well. You, that shitty inner voice, that gremlin voice, you know, that inherited voice from your parents or whatever is playing on a loop all the time. So if you can start to have awareness of it, how you're talking to yourself, what you're saying, you're going to recognize that that is how you are showing up in your partnership as well. Mm -hmm. You know, it is coming, it's hitting you first and then it's flowing out to the other person. Yeah. So having some of that self-awareness where you can see yourself doing it, you can, even if you don't change anything, it's like having the breath, recognizing I'm doing it, choosing to go forward anyway. Okay, cool. And then the next time there's the moment that says, oh, okay, I could take a breath. I could choose to not engage with this way. And I have absolutely said like, all I know how to do right now is start getting really big. 
I don't know what else to do. I'm just trying not to do the mm-hmm. old thing. So he and I call it the uncomfortable in between. Oh. Like I am is so in the uncomfortable in between right now. Like, can you help me? Like, can you put your stuff down for a minute? I'm really trying. And I've got just fingernails on the edge mm-hmm. here, you know? Mm-hmm. I love that. We call we call that um, saying what's there. In it's my coaching school uh, alma mater nice. where they just like where you say out loud that you're uncomfortable, that you don't know what to say, that yep. you know, just like <laughs> just whatever it is that you're thinking that's like kind of yeah. like socially unacceptable. Just say it. I think people appreciate that vulnerability so much. And I think it's a different kind of vulnerability too, where mm. you don't have to have an answer right. to your vulnerability. You know, which a lot of times I think particularly as women, we feel like, okay, I'm going to tell you the problem and also immediately the solution. Right. Like, and this is a place that says we're trying something new and we're going to suck at it. So let's just be okay with the mm-hmm. suck. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. And then I know that you have the quizzes and everything on your website and we'll make sure and link mm-hmm. to that in the show description. So tell us what are sacred partners? Yeah. So I like thinking of a sacred partner as the ideal person that comes in and pushes all of your buttons. Ooh, okay. You know, like we talk about soulmates and we're like, oh, it's so warm and fuzzy. This is so beautiful. And I'm like, maybe. And maybe they are the person that says, oh, cool. You wanted personal growth. Here you go. I'm going to trigger. I'll all give of you your, your fucking growth <laughs> <Yeah>. opportunity. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. So when we can have that awareness that says, okay, this person is not here like to make my life miserable. They're giving me an opportunity to stretch and grow. An ideal sacred partnership is one where the other person is a safe space to like have vulnerability with and try to show up in new ways and bring healing to old parts of you. Mm -hmm. Not safe partnerships for any of this is someone that's going to use your fight language and throw it back at you Mm -hmm. or your wounds and use that against you. Um, And that's, I mean, like a lot of comments that I get on social media are people in partnerships saying, well, I would never say that because my partner would just turn around and I'm like, yeah, okay. You're not in a healthy relationship yeah. or a safe relationship right there. I agree this with that. isn't the space for you to be working on this, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyone that uses your own wounds, trauma, vulnerabilities, kindness, openness as a weapon against you is a mm-hmm. major red flag. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Is, they're not necessarily bad people. They just have a lot of work to do and they're, they're not safe. And they're going to slow down the work you can do Mm -hmm. because now we've got a whole step in there and I do one-on-one sessions with people and we work on this stuff all the time of like, why did this relationship feel good to me? Mm -hmm. Why did it feel familiar and okay? Yeah. So let's start with that. <laughs> well, on that topic, this isn't on my list of questions I wanted to ask you, but I just, I made the TikTok a long time ago, but I just recently uploaded it to, to Instagram, like in the very beginning of April about, I stitched a therapist who said something like the partners that we have the most intense attraction to are typically the people who bring up, who like touch our deepest wounds. And then yeah. my stitch said something like, you know, here's me having a montage of intense abandonment. <laughs> memories like but i find yeah. that to be true do you absolutely Ugh. absolutely that's why we find ourselves in these sacred partnerships mm-hmm. and you know without fail it's an opportunity for us to show up and do an old thing differently mm-hmm. so for you you know like you in that partnership even though it was toxic there was opportunity there yeah. to say you know what this feels familiar yep i see myself recreating stuff from my past, mm-hmm. do I want to tell the story the same way, or do I want to choose to like take ownership of this? How do I want this and head in a new it? direction? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, quick side note, and this is like mm-hmm. mostly for my listeners. So, I can't tell the story quite yet, but with that first relationship, I saw a psychic ten years ago who said that. I would circle back with him. And I was like, that's impossible. Like, no, she's like, I'm not saying that you're going to get back together with him, but he, it was Akashic records opening. And she said, Mm -hmm. he was your, 
He had a soul contract, which I'm not sure how much I buy into this. I think it's interesting. She said he had a soul contract to be your catalyst, to let you go so you can do the work that you do in the world. And he fulfilled that contract. However, you have unfinished growth and business with him and you will circle back with him. And I was like, get the fuck out. So fast forward, that was in 2013. Fast forward, he did circle back with me. (laughs) This has just been this year. And we had an interesting, I didn't see him, but we had some very interesting phone calls and I found, and I'll, I'll explain more later listeners. My listeners are probably like, what the fuck, Andrea, (laughs) that I found myself in the same pattern with him that we were in our relationship, the push pull, like a little bit of drama, like me being drawn Mm -hmm. to the drama, me speaking to him, like that I wouldn't speak to anyone else except him. And then I was like, isn't this interesting? (laughs) (laughs) I find myself here. And, but very quickly I had the wherewithal to be like, what am I here to learn? Because she, that same Akashic Records lady said, you will either meet people and because like, most of us are here to learn a specific lesson or lessons. And if you Mm -hmm. don't learn it, you are going to keep showing up with that same person because it's a soul type of thing or people that are exactly like them until you learn the lesson. So I'm listening to that in my head, like as I'm having this interaction with him and I'm like, okay, I think it's time at 40 fucking seven years old (laughs) when I met him when I was 17 for me to learn this lesson. Finally, like, what is it? And then he was gone. And we were we were yeah. done with our interactions. So it's it's so fascinating to me that whether or not all the woo-woo stuff is true, it's fascinating to me that here I, I found myself saying out loud, here I am again. Yes. And what yeah. do I want to do different this time? Which I'm sure like everyone listening has had that moment again and again of like, oh my God, here I am again. Mm -hmm. Here we are in the same fight again. Here I am feeling the same way again. The same reaction. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so often it's, I mean, like you have clearly built an incredible depth of knowledge to know like, okay, here I am again. What do I want to grab onto to walk myself in a different direction? And I think for so many people, it's like, okay, here I am again. I still have nothing. Like there's mm-hmm. no tools yeah. to walk and that's okay with. too for that moment. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. But then you know, okay, that's that's what I'm putting. That's what I'm building right now mm-hmm. is the next time I'm in this situation, here's how I want to speak to myself differently. Here's yes. how I want to show up in that situation differently. You know? Here's how I want to show up in that. Yeah, totally. And then, and also, you know what it, it, it honestly came down for me was how do I want to show up for myself differently? Exactly. Yes. That's why I say every time, like it starts with you, the work starts with you. Mm -hmm. It's not about, I love like that, that relationship came back for you. It's a lot of times I see when people have maybe taken time apart from a parent and then it comes back again that, you know, we're building a new relationship now. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you're never going to go back to 17 and right. heal all of that stuff. Someone else isn't going to go back to their childhood. So that person is not going to heal the parts of you that were hurt. That's mm-hmm. your job, mm-hmm. but you can build this new adult. You're 47. I mean, that's a whole lifetime, a lifetime. of person, 40 years mm-hmm. in between, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's a new way of interacting, yeah. a new relationship. It doesn't go back and sh- heal all the old stuff though. Right. For sure. Absolutely. Okay. Let's take one more break and we come back. I'm going to ask you about the inner critic because I love talking about this. So be right back. Fast forward to the end of 2024 and think about your goals. What can you do right now to give yourself the best chance of succeeding? If you want to learn a new language, you absolutely should get Babbel. Don't pay hundreds of dollars for private tutors or waste hours on apps that don't really help you speak the language. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are handcrafted by over 200 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. Babbel's designed by real people for real conversations. Studies from Yale, Michigan State University, and others continue to prove Babbel is better. One study found that using Babbel for 15 hours is equivalent to a full semester at college. Now it's so easy to speak simple conversation phrases 
phrases with the guy that takes care of my lawn without having to consult language apps. Here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash noise. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash noise, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash noise. Rules and restrictions may apply. You know when you're listening to a song on the radio and you get the profound feeling that the song playing was written about you? Now imagine having the power to gift that same incredible feeling to someone you love with an original song from Songfinch that actually is written just for them. Songfinch lets you create an original radio quality song inspired by your own life and the people you love. It's completely unique, personal, and lasts forever. Whether your song is for Father's Day, an upcoming graduation, wedding, or anniversary, or even just a gift to show your loved one how much you care, start your song now to lock in one of Songfinch's top artists. I gifted Songfinch to myself, a song about my late father, and I'm so excited to play you a clip. Flipping through the slides of learning how to live and how to love And coming undone a father-daughters without So she writes it down One of my clients heard about Songfinch from this podcast, and so she had a song created for her son who was graduating, and she told me that they both cried when she played it for him and that it exceeded her expectations. For a limited time, Songfinch is letting our listeners upload their song to Spotify for free so you and the lucky person you gift it to can listen to it anywhere, anytime. Go to songfinch.com slash noise and start your song. After you purchase, you'll be prompted to add Spotify streaming for your original song for free, a $50 value. Again, my URL is songfinch.com slash noise. Don't forget to share your song with us too. songfinch.com slash noise. Okay, as I mentioned before the break, we talk about the inner critic a lot around here. And you talk about what you call the inherited, do you call it the inherited gremlin voice? Um, so I call it the inherited voice, the gremlin voice. I work with girls, uh, it's called Main Voyage, it's 10 to 14. And so I started calling it the gremlin voice for them because they got it. And okay, yeah, I yeah. know that voice. And as it turns out, adults resonate with it. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> So how do you, how do you, well, I'm curious with both, like, do you, how do you talk about it differently with t- 10 to 14 year old girls as you do as adults, or is it the same? Just different. Uh, honestly, it's pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah, totally. Um, so I call it your intuitive voice versus your inherited voice. Mm-hmm. And it was really jarring to me when I started working with girls. And it was because my daughter was 10 at the time and like, okay, let's do this phase of life differently consistently, they've all had a lot of difficulty identifying their intuitive voice and no problem at all identifying the gremlin voice. So that was then informed, you know, the work I was doing with women as well of like, wait, 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 let's go back actually and really clarify what your intuitive voice feels like, what it sounds like, what it says, um, which gave us a lot more clarity on the inherited voice. So To take a step back, your inherited voice is what was told to you about you. Mm -hmm. So this is information you were given way before you were actually had informed opinions about yourself. And it, it becomes a voice that is limiting and it's small and it keeps us in old versions of ourselves. And it says things like, who do you think you are? Mm -hmm. Or someone else is doing it so much better. Or you're a failure. Mine likes to so, say no one really cares about you all that much. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. that is even though they classic. might act like they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's. I think mine is like um, you don't actually matter. Mm-hmm. I think that's where mine goes. Similar flavor, but different. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> different meal. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally it. And I mean, that is like an incredibly powerful thing when you can actually articulate what it is Mm -hmm. that that gremlin voice is saying to you or that inherited voice. I like thinking of it in terms of the inherited voice, because then we can start pulling the thread to see where it originated at. Mm -hmm. Because almost every time we find it originated in our parents, which means we can pull it further back. We can see where they inherited Mm -hmm. it from. And then we can have that realization that says, oh my God, this was never mine. Yeah. 
this actually had nothing to do with me. This was my parents' wound that they then gave to me. Like, like, wait, oh my God, I've been showing up Mm -hmm. as if this were true. And it wasn't even real, Mm -hmm. you know? I, I, that's interesting. I also like just to tag on to that. Yes. And it's our cultures, you know, that's just oh, been handed down to us yeah. like that. That's what my whole third book was about is like, I kept seeing these patterns in women over the last decade and a half of perfectionism, of people pleasing, of negative self-talk, of overachieving all these ways yeah. that, that prevent us from truly showing up. And I was like, you know, who's to fucking blame is patriarchy. <laughs> A yes. Lot of it. A lot of it is totally. that. So no, I, it's like, yeah. you can, all right, you can come into the workforce, but like, don't let anything else live. Everything. Like, make sure you're still doing everything. Everything like, and, else. And then we will let you come in here. Mm-hmm. Barely. Yeah. No wonder yeah. we have all this negative mm-hmm. self-talk and these like ridiculous expectations and standards. And, um, okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I want to know before I let you go, I want to ask you like based on your work, what is the most common thing that you see women struggle with and to tag on to that what is one thing that they can do to help challenge that? So the number one thing that I see women do is doubt themselves. Mm-hmm. Because as women, we are gifted with an incredible sense of intuition mm-hmm. and you know that you know And you doubt it, you move forward, you come to a place where you're like, God damn it, I knew this was not going to go the way I wanted. So what I would love for everybody to do is consider the things that you know, if it didn't have to make sense to anybody else, Mm -hmm. like what would you, what would you move forward with? What would you do differently? Because it just makes sense for you. Mm -hmm. What would you start doing? What would you stop doing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a great. And then we can like put on that, like, this is, you're, you're flexing the muscle of your intuition. That's a muscle that's going to get stronger, Mm -hmm. but just to start with the idea of like, okay, if you didn't have to justify it, if you didn't have to have it make sense to somebody else, where would you go? What would you do? I hope everyone, I know that a lot of people listen to this when they're driving or they're in the shower or they're working out. Like, I hope that you pause and like, safely open up the notes app in your phone or grab a piece of paper, post it, whatever, and, and write that down and, and, um, and just marinate on it. I think that's such a, I, and I'm a sucker for a good, powerful coaching question. <laughs> you are too. They Absolutely. make me so happy. Like it's, it's oh my gosh. almost embarrassing how much joy they bring me. <laughs> well, I couldn't agree with you more. And this goes back to my years as a midwife where always feel like we have the answer inside of us. Mm. And it is very possible that we have not been given the invitation to hear that answer yet. So if that's what I can do is provide an invitation, fantastic. I'm Mm. so excited for you to discover what was always there, just waiting to be heard. Well, and I think, I I think childbirth is an, is an, is an excellent example of that. But, you know, for people who, who haven't experienced that before, even primal body experiences like being really hungry or being mm-hmm. really – like think about when you were a kid or even – I know there's a lot of Disney adults listening. Like when you were planning a trip to Disney and like just that that natural excitement that comes up in your body, like that kind of just it, – it just – your body just knows what to do. That's yeah. – that that is what to me – intuition feels like and like and then when we just allow it to happen i remember and the reason i say childbirth is such a an, a good example of that like before i had children my mom said we would talk about it and she's like when i had the three of you i didn't want anyone there i just wanted to go out into a field this is how she always she's told the story <laughs> like a million times she's like i just wanted to go out into a field all by myself and just just be out there and like maybe get me like a towel and some warm water and i'll just do it myself i don't want anybody around i don't want anybody's help and i thought that was so strange i was like why it, it seems like i i mean like i want i need i need so much help because i didn't trust that i could do it yeah. myself and then i went into labor um and I remember I was in the, I went, I excused myself to the bathroom when I got into a room because I, because I, I can also get overstimulated very easy. I was like, I need to get away mm-hmm. from people. So I said I had to go to the bathroom, but I really didn't. 
and I was standing there and I caught a glimpse of myself in the mirror and I looked wild, even though like maybe my hair wasn't messy or anything. And just like the look in my eye, I was like, oh my God, this is what it means to be just primal and all your senses are heightened. And you just, I never had an experience like that ever in my life where I had no choice, but to completely surrender. Not until my dad died in 2016, where I experienced the very other end of that spectrum in in like real grief, where it's like, you don't, your brain is not in control. Like, right. You just got to surrender. Yeah. I love that point so much. And you are totally right that that is what I always found so powerful about birth is it was like the socially sanctioned, like approved time where you could be wild. And like Mm -hmm. feral Mm -hmm. and just whatever it was. And it was always so interesting to see the women that would resist it so hard every step of the way because they didn't want to make sounds that didn't feel okay. They didn't want their body to do anything that didn't feel okay. Mm -hmm. And the sooner that a woman would just surrender to that and release it and say, all right, shit's about to get weird. I have Literal no idea shit, what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Literal. Yes, absolutely. Sometimes. And it's the exact same thing in grief, where we mm-hmm. feel like we have to grieve in a certain way. We have to look in a certain way. I lost my mom when I was six months pregnant with my daughter. Mm-hmm. And I remember like getting ready for her birth as a midwife already yeah. and saying like, oh, I'm so looking forward to labor because the external pain will match the internal pain then. And that will, I'll finally be able to let it go. Right. Which now I can see like, oh, muffin, my God, no. (laughs) But, you know, it's because we don't have those places where it's okay to really be wild, to really make people around us uncomfortable with our emotions, our feelings, our grief, our love, our uncomfortableness, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That must be why I have a desire for my 50. I'm going to, I'm going to be 48 next week, but for my 50th, maybe I don't have to wait this long. Like I want to weather permitting, like gather a bunch of girlfriends that want to go and go somewhere to a cabin, like out in the middle of nowhere and like dance. I'm going to take all my clothes up. You don't have to to, like, and we're going to dance around like Stevie Nicks music and just like be feral. Like (laughs) that is like ideal 50th birthday. DM me if a you want to invite. Percent. <laughs> <laughs> My 41st birthday is on Saturday. So as a fellow Aries, I am so down with your birthday plan. <laughs> I see you fellow Aries. Yeah, we, yeah. we yes are a little much fire. sometimes. <laughs> we are exactly. a little much. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Is there any, before we go, I like to ask my guests, like, is there anything that you want to circle back to that we talked about or anything additional that you want to throw in? I am going to ask you where you want people to go to find you, but is there anything that you want to make sure that you say in order for you to feel complete? I always like reminding people, you don't have to have this all figured out. Nobody does. And there is no finish line on any of this. There is no place where we are perfect and whole and we've done the thing. So wherever you're at in the process, like welcome, Mm -hmm. it's perfect right where you're at. You're exactly where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. I wrote about that in my very last chapter of my first book, 52 Ways to Live a Kick-Ass Life, because I told them like 51 ways how to kick ass. And then the very last chapter is like, by the way, if you don't do any of this, like you're exactly where you need to be. You're good. Yeah. You're good. You're doing it right. right. You're doing it right. Well, where do you want people to go? Like, where can they, you're, I know you're at lanamorgan.com and that of course will be in the show mm-hmm. notes to get the quiz. Correct. Is there anywhere else you yep. want to send people? Uh, social media is great. I mean, just like you found me on TikTok, I have a huge amount of content on there. Mm-hmm. So you that do. can be just a nice way to dip your toe in the water and see like, all right, just 30 seconds. Short what form. can I think about mm-hmm. today? Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I do have a fight languages book coming out so you can pre-order it on the website Exciting. and stay tuned there. I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, exactly. I would mention that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So when is that, oh, yeah. when is that coming out? Um, sometime this summer, I don't have an okay. official date yet. So, so summer 2023. Stay tuned. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. All of that will be in the show description. <laughs> Listeners, thank you so much for being here. I know that your time is valuable and I appreciate you so so, so much. And remember, it's our life's journey to make ourselves better humans and our life's responsibility to make the world a better place. Bye for now. Hey, did you know there's free secret podcast episodes waiting for you that are not part of my regular podcast feed? Yes. 
andreaowen.com slash free. And you just sign up. You get a link sent to you. It's very secret. It's like a secret club. We don't have a secret handshake. Don't worry about that. But it's these motivating podcast episodes that I made for you. They're under 20 minutes each. There's three of them. They're for wherever you are in your life. So head on over there and grab them. They range from really supporting you and seeing you where you are and being compassionate all the way to giving you a giant kick in your ass and telling you how amazing and gorgeous and phenomenal you are. So andreaowen.com slash free and get your hands on that free podcast feed. I'd like to introduce you to the Minimalist Moms podcast. It's hard enough being a mom, and the last thing you need is stress from too much stuff and an overcrowded schedule. For too long, I lived with the mindset that bigger was better, and the more I added to my life, instead of feeling better, I felt overwhelmed. It was time for a radical new mindset. Less is more. I'm not into extremes. I didn't throw everything away. My brand of minimalism is more about adding than subtracting. Get rid of the excess to make room for what you love. In other words, it's about living life with purpose. I hope you'll listen in and my guest and myself can inspire you to think more and do with less. The Minimalist Moms Podcast, available wherever you listen to podcasts.